Welcome to your Monday edition of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Hopefully you guys had a fabulous weekend. I know you did. Yeah, I did. I had my first ever staycation. I didn't, I never understood the importance of a staycation. I just thought it was like just staying at a random hotel for a night and I never saw the point. But actually having done it, I now realize that it's actually a huge thing. Like I everyone was, needs to do it. Yeah, I thought it was great because I mean, now mom is heavily thinking about doing a family staycation. I'm like, yeah, I've managed to get mom on board for this now. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. It's we, hope you, uh, we hope you had a great weekend as well. We've had some crazy weather the last few weeks. It's, it's rain and shine and rain and shine. And trust me, when it shines, it really shines. It really shines. And that's why I think it leads us into what we're talking about today, which is the whole topic of eye care. Now, one of the things that I've realized, having lived here and lived abroad, is mm. that a lot of Singaporeans don't actually wear sunglasses, which is a bit crazy, considering that we have summer pretty much 75% of the year round right? Surely we should all be wearing sunglasses from the moment we are born until the moment we die. But in Singapore, <laughs> it's just not, it's just not a common thing. And I don't quite understand why do you well, I think also because it's it can be quite humid, it can be quite cloudy, so you don't feel that burn as much. Mm. Um, with the humidity, it doesn't feel as bright as compared to, let's say, if you were in Australia, you know, you've got a lack of ozone layer That's over true. there. Uh, so you really do feel the, the harshness of the sun and the glare. But it's not just about that glare. It's also about actually taking care of your eyes so that they'll last you for the long run. So Correct. here to shed a little bit more light on the topic wow. of eye care is Aline Chua from W Optics. Come and join us, Aline. Come and, come and sit in with us. Hi. Looking beautiful today on a Monday. I can shake your hand. <laughs> it's yes. okay. No, just chill. safe distancing. Okay. So yeah. thanks for joining us today. I think this topic of okay. eye care mm -hmm. and eye wear is really important. Um, and I think what we wanted to maybe set the ball rolling with was just why exactly is eye health so important? Um, first of all, if you look into Singapore life expectancy, uh, in our statistic, it shows that we will live up to about 83 years old. Oh, okay. fantastic. And for <laughs> females, right, and clinical studies, we will leave, outlive the males by five years old. So we will live up to about close to 88 years old. Good That's job, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case, if, if let's say we don't take care of the eyes, and if we live up to that age, in general, we need eyes or uh, visual cues to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. When we were young or infancy time, you need visual cues to actually um, start learning and develop and you develop your brain. So up to here, when we get older, if the mobility skills deplete due to the fall of due to visual impairment, that's where we might have a lot of problem leads to depression, dementia, mm. or the, the worst thing that I see, it might be leads to modality. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And um, so in Singapore, mm. uh, based on all your years of experience, mm. uh, what are some of the, the bigger issues that Singaporeans face when it comes to eye health? Um, mainly, I've, I'm, I am actually a true blue, uh, born and raised in Singapore and study in Singapore, except going to the um, US for a few years for corresponding study. But the thing is, I realized that Singaporeans, as like what Kelly was telling me earlier on, most Singaporeans do not know we need a pair of sunglasses. You got it right, Barbara. The thing is that Sing Singapore humidity probably is up to 60%. Mm. Okay, it's cloudy all the way. But if you think that for a season, it's summer throughout, you need to wear a pair of protective eyewear. Great, because we've got, we've got hot and dry, and then we've got hot and wet, really. Yes. <laughs> those, those are our two seasons. <laughs> but throughout, it's all sunny. Yeah. yeah. So we need to pair, get a pair of good sun, protective sunglasses. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to prevent the latest stage of ocular diseases or eye diseases like cataract or even worse, we call it AMD, age-related macular degeneration that will lead to 
permanent blindness. And when you say good sunglasses, I yeah. mean, we're not just talking about the $2 sunglasses that <laughs> you can get at the market when you go over to Thailand, right? Yeah. You, you, you can get it in Singapore at $2 too. But, but, <laughs> but do those actually help at all? Uh, good question. For me, as long as it's a functional pair, but I would urge or the public to get it from the authentic shops, mm. uh, optical shops, that from the dealers that crosses and borrows it as this is a UV 400. So UV yeah. 400 is the minimum yes, that we should be Yes, that's a baseline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And any, anything lower than that, does that just not have any effect? Um, yeah. UV 400 is actually 100% blockage for UVA and UVB. So in this case, we're not talking about our UVC now, is ozone. So as long as you cover that 100%, which is a UV 400, that is um, practically good enough. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's also important to make sure, like you said, that you have eyewear which is properly registered because anyone can go <laughs> and print a sticker which says UV 400. Yeah. But I think it's important to make yeah. sure that we're actually getting it from a certified, yeah. authenticated yeah. person, That's right? right. Okay. All right. So we're going to pop off for a short break. When we return, we're going to be exploring this a little bit more uh, and also from the practical aspect uh, with a professional athlete who will be joining us. Who is joining us? Well, if you're a big fan of tennis, then maybe you'll recognize her name, Sarah Pung, joining us after this break. Don't go away. This is Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. We're looking out for a sweet taste of fantabulous fudges and looking forward to our ex national water polo player and owner of Green Yard to be joining us on the show. We are going to take the chance to convince him on how greens can taste fantastic as Olivia Wong, our only addition to the dietitian team of SSI, join us right here on Watch You Cooking Fast Forward. Hello and welcome back to Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. It's all about the eye health today. Joining us, our second guest is Sarah Pang, WTA ranked Singaporean pro tennis player and also Oakley athlete. Sarah, how are you doing? Very well, thanks for having me. It's so nice to be here today. It's nice to have you back. I mean, we've had several chats over the course of the past few years and it's always nice to see, chat and talk about your progress. Thank you. How's progress been with COVID? <laughs> it's been really interesting. I've actually found it very... Um, enlightening a period of growth. Uh, some people find it so hard to get through, but uh, it's been such a great opportunity to really address a lot of like ghosts in your closet that come out during lockdown oh. especially. Oh wow, this and sounds deep. Sounds oh, like it is. It's, it's, it's almost <laughs> like process work, you know, and, that's, and it's really funny because after lockdown when phase two started, I, I got back out on court and because I had done so much process work and so much footwork because we had no access to the courts, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I could come out and do stuff I could never do before lockdown. Wow. Yeah, so I, I'm very thankful for that and it's just, you just keep going upwards. Judging by your smile, you look very chuffed with the progress that you've yeah. made. <laughs> yes, I really am, like, I really am. Good job, me. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but it's nice to see. So, I mean, obviously today we're here to talk about eye, hair, eye health and eye care and eye wear. And, I mean... Eileen, you can also sort of like weigh in here as well. Mm. Having, as an athlete, how important is it to you to take care of your eyes? I mean, talking about tennis, I mean, hand-eye coordination, like that, that's a pretty big thing. But how important is it for you to take care of your eyes? Massively. Um, uh, from wearing shades, which is what you guys were talking about earlier, to doing eye exercises, to, you know, your visual plane is connected to your neuromuscular plane. So how, how clearly you can see the ball um, is determined by a lot of other things, which is very important. And, and you've got to prime your eyes to be able to, to see that ball yeah. well. 
Is that why I can never hit it? <laughs> um, so just miss, just, just, oh, it's, oh, okay. Yeah, so or else I, I don't think you can blame that on anything except <laughs> my own coordination. coordination. <laughs> Barbara, I can teach you some eye exercise. There's no problem. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Appreciate it. Now, I'm quite curious. Do you, you wear sunglasses when you play or yes. practice? Yes, I do. I okay. do. Especially when it gets very, very hot out. Like, it's usually five degrees more on court. And then with mm. the reflections, mm. uh, there are different types of heat across Southeast Asia. Uh, Thailand feels different from Malaysia, feels different from Cambodia to Singapore. Mm. So it's really about getting used to the different levels of humidity, but also the corresponding uh, brightness levels. The glare, mm. right? Yeah, so, the glare. I mean, if, if we talk about this geographically, yeah. right, we're, we're on the equator, which means that the sun hits us at a very sort of like top-down mm. angle. But the moment you go any higher mm. or lower on the equator, that angle of the light hitting you comes very, very differently, which is why I think if you go to the extremes and you're in Europe or if you're in Australia, that's mm. why a lot more people mm. do tend to wear sunglasses mm -hmm. but in Singapore where you it's don't sort feel of it when it's coming top down I mean you don't, scalp you don't gets feel that need as much so what age did you start being a bit more particular about your eye care and taking care of your eyes strangely enough it was actually when I was on one of my first 10 tours um, on the pro circuit and I remember watching a Japanese girl in Jakarta at the heat of day and it was so hot, I could barely open my eyes. And I was sitting in the stands in the stadium, and she was mm -hmm. out there on court. And she was just crashing the ball, but she had on a pair of oaks, oak leaves. And, and, and she was hitting the ball so well. And I was thinking to myself, man, like, you, can't, you can barely see without shades on court sometimes. Some, some players can play without shades, but I think for the long term, it's really unhealthy for your eyes. Uh, I've had friends who don't wear shades and they've played consistently through the years and, and their whites are yellow because there's so much tan from that. So, um, I mean, it's important to look good as well and to just keep eye health in general. So, so let, let yeah. maybe you can weigh in on that. That mm. tanning of the whites of our eyes. That it's not is the tan that I want. <laughs> <Is it? Yes. laughs> not, the tan, not the tan that Barbara's been going to the beach for and it's not the one that we really want because when you look at someone's eyes, you want yeah. them to be bright, white and beautiful. That's right. right. But tell mm. us a little bit about the scientific process behind that. Okay. What, what is actually happening there? Uh, I guess um, Sarah is wearing the Oakley with Polaroid. <laughs> Yeah. Polarized lenses? Yeah, yeah polarized, polarized lenses. That's very yes. good. So the thing is that what you mentioned about the tanning of the region, that white region is called the conjunctiva. So the thing is for Sarah, um, in fact, she's really blessed to have a pair of Oakley with a polarizer. So this such case usually will cause us with a huge amount of UV exposure will lead to uh, a growth on that white region. Mm -hmm. If you can see some of the windsurfer, uh, tennis player that's not wearing sunglasses. Yep. And that kind of a region, in fact, it actually grows. Clinically, we call it pinguacular. This is due to huge amount of UV spotted on. Mm -hmm. So no matter how much eye drops you want to clear off that white, that yellow region, on that conjunctiva, it, it, is, won't clear. Yeah, it will not clear. So mm. it's a compounded effect that you yes. cannot actually get That's rid right. of. So what is the long-term effect of that? Good question. The long-term effect is if that binguacular penetrate into Barbara's central of the <laughs> eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I sorry. Really yeah, yeah. To <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> to me. So that will cause a race wedge penetrate into the transparent cornea and it will impede the cornea transparency, mm -hmm. uh, the transparency. So that will cause a permanent damage or blindness. Oh, yeah. wow. And that Nasty. is called terrigen. If it's a severe case, the vision is ex actually being affected. You have to see an eye specialist to get rid of that piece of growth. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's mm. that suddenly sounds a lot more drastic. <laughs> You're like, I'm glad sounds I got different. sunglasses on. <laughs> so, so then what's the difference between polarized lenses and non-polarized lenses? Mm. And beca because I think whenever you're looking, at especially at price points, like polarized lenses are always a lot more expensive yeah. um, as opposed to just your basic UV 400 yeah. coverage. That's right. right. So what's, what's the difference? Uh, good question. I only wear polarizer when I'm out to the snowing mountain. I remember last year when I was 
before the pandemic started. Uh, before I even met um, Joseph, after I, he came back for a re eye review, so I went to Annapurna Range. So we didn't know it's it's actually um, close to spring. But the thing is, uh, it was a late uh, beginning of spring. Mm -hmm. So once we are out to about 400 alt meter altitude, that's where you will see snowy glaciers. Mm. And you have to wear that polarizer because the white wash will actually blind your eyes. So mm. if you notice, People are going snowing. It's all the reflective pair of uh, lenses. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's interesting yeah. you bring this up because when you're driving on the road, yeah. because the concrete is not always a dark color, if it's a Sometimes lighter concrete, it's a lighter. that's when you get that glare coming yeah. off on the road. And I feel like that is when a good pair of polarized yeah. lenses right. sort of mm. kicks in. Yeah. So then, Sarah, when you use glasses, is there anything that you use specifically to help you? Mm. Um, just to make sure, I mean, obviously clarity, vision out there, you need to be able to see the ball. Yes, um, the really, I've, I've tried a whole bunch and the ones that really only work for me are the, are the Oakley lenses. Mm -hmm. They have uh, the prism technology, mm -hmm. so that actually gives it a tint which uh, blocks out a lot of the UV, but also simultaneously, I have no idea how they do it. It's amazing. It makes the ball clearer. It's a contrast. Yes, it's it's a contrast. So so, they and they have different shades of shades as well. So even on a cloudy day, I cannot wear the darkest mm. tinted lenses. I can mm. wear lighter tinted mm. lenses, and I see I still see the ball clearer, which is amazing. Um, so there are many times on court when it's the heat of day. I typically practice from. 11 to 1, 12 to 2, because mm -hmm. we need to get used to the heat. Mm -hmm. um, and you get to work on your tan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just say, you got a good glow going on there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a science to that as well. <laughs> one day, one day. But, um, but yes, uh, at that, those times of day, even with the Oakleys, it looks as bright as day. So when I take my lenses off, there's so much glare again, I can barely mm -hmm. see. The court is glowing because there's so much heat bouncing yeah. off the ground. So the prisms really protect you and 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 you can play with no no fuss. Even the frames and the way the frames are fitted on your nose and around your... It just gives you all that yeah, protection. It right? gives you that protection and no matter how heavy I run or skid or slide or turn, it stays. Let's have a look. That's, that's, that's important. It's, ama it's You're amazing. You're going to mess up her hair now. Oh, is it? Is it? <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright. So these are the, the latest Coco World um, Oakley range, wow. and they're actually handmade um, mm. by a Japanese artist based in Boston, and wow, he actually so fancy. splashes like all this color on. He uses traditional paint, uh, Japanese paintbrush technique uh, to mm. make his art. So Oakley collaborated with him, and and this is what came out. So wanky, look at <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, sort of just to wrap this up, then, Eileen, I think it's very important. We spend so mm. much time making sure that we're liberally applying sunblock onto our bodies. Mm. Um, parents, especially, I, I have a young one, it's very important to make sure that we're constantly applying sunblock. Mm. But then if we're neglecting our eyes and our eye care, uh, any word just to round us off today, any word of advice for parents trying to protect their young children's eyes? Because obviously, if it's a compounded effect, yes. and if that exposure and overexposure starts from young, yes. how would you best advise a parent to help their child take care of their eyes? I think the best is to just wear a cap, because that's, I would call it CNG, cheap and good. Yep. Mm. Because uh, if you can see like in part. Australia, every kid, in fact, they are being trained or um, to wear that. Yeah. But in Singapore, we don't see it. so. Uh, it's good to actually just wear a hat. And next thing is sometimes we might be a little bit careful and ask the kids to wear UV protective eyewear. But sometimes we, as clinician, we don't really encourage because the kids need some little more UV light at the earlier stage. But okay. uh, later stage, like us, I'm so sorry. We have to wear UV sunglasses because oh. that <laughs> because at the young age, dear, um, they need to receive a hormone called dopamine. Okay. It's actually a happy hormone, makes you happy. That's why we have to sun ourselves outdoor and play. Get the kids outdoor at least 14 minutes a day. Oh, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I was okay. like, oh, two hours a day. What? No, no, no. <laughs> 20 minutes a day. Keep them. Uh, not just keep them happy. The dopamine. It is actually, scientifically, it is to protect the retinal 
from getting a short-sighted or myopia in an early stage. Yeah. Mm. So it's all about so balance, really. So yeah. I think a good balance yeah. definitely needed. So we need to may help them wear caps. I think that's mm. something that we could all do a little bit more of. Make sure they're getting enough sunlight so that we mm. prevent the myopia, but not too much so that we <laughs> blind ourselves as we get older. <laughs> uh, ladies, thank you so much for that's sharing. Good. I really appreciate you guys taking <laughs> time you. out to be thank with you. us. Stick around. Barbara's going to be bringing you through a workout here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. We're looking out for a sweet taste of fantabulous fudges and looking forward to our ex national water polo player and owner of Green Yard to be joining us on the show. We are going to take the chance to convince him on how greens can taste fantastic as Olivia Wong, our only addition to the dietitian team of SSI, join us right here on What You Cooking Fast Forward. Welcome back to Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. It is just me taking you for today's workout. And I thought, why not let's mix it up a little bit. What we're going to do is still four exercises, but it's always good to complement uh, your cardio with a little bit of weights. So we're going to do one cardio, one weighted, one cardio, one weighted. For cardio, um, I'm going to do boxing. So four basic punches, a uh, little combination. If you don't know how to box, that's absolutely fine. You can do anything from high knees to mountain climbers to jumping jacks. It's completely up to you. So we're going to start off uh, nice and easy. One, two, a front hook and a back uppercut for 40 seconds in three, two, one. Let's go. One, two, hook, uppercut. One, two, hook, uppercut. So you want to make sure you're always nice and light on the balls of your feet. One, two, hook. Back up a cut. One, two, hook. Back up a cut. Nice. One, two, and keep going. You want to bounce around in between. Stay nice and light on your feet. One, two, hook up. One, two, hook up. One, two, hook up. One, two, hook up. Nice and easy. Making sure you're always alternating your shoulders, keeping your hands nice and high. Chin down, eyes up on your opponent. In three, two, one, and time. Very good. Then you get to breathe. <sighs> okay. Next one, we're just going to do a squat, all right? So if you have a weight with you, go into a nice deep squat, holding on to one dumbbell, kettlebell, bag, sack of rice, whatever, whatever it is that you want. We're going in three, two, one, and goblet squat. Squeeze your glutes. So you want to maintain engagement on the way down and bring it back up. Sit it down and bring it back up. There we go. Down. And up, Whew. keeping that chest up nice and high. And at the same time, don't forget to breathe. Good job, Barbara. Keep going. And yes, I am talking to myself. This is like a mini little hype for myself. And we go down and up, very good. Get down and up. We're gonna go for two more. Down and up. And down, and up. Woo, beautiful. All right, next combination for your boxing. We're gonna go two uppercuts, one hook, finish off with a straight. So two uppercuts, one hook, finishing off with a straight. We're going in five seconds. Heels off the ground, nice and weighted. Slight bend in the knees in three, two, one, and uh, up, up, hook, cross. Up, up, hook, cross. So you can start to play around with a little bit of tempo. Quick uppercuts, hook, power, cross. Up, up, hook, cross. Up, up, hook, cross. Make sure on that cross, your shoulder's coming in to protect you. Nice little twist in the fist. Make sure it lands good and heavy. Good. Whew. Again, don't forget to breathe. <sighs> and there you go. I'm just going to stop talking now. Got a thumbs up from the producer, which means I'm doing a good job. Yes. And two, there we go. Up, up, hook, cross, up, up, hook, cross, up, up, hook, cross, up, up, hook, cross. Whew. A little bit more in three, two, one. Okay, last exercise. 
that we're going for, we're going to do deadlifts. So for your deadlifts, you can take one big one, two heavy ones, completely up to you. You want to make sure that you're maintaining a nice straight back, soft bend in the knees, hinging a little bit more at the hips, maintain engagement in your glutes, so you squeeze it as you're coming up. So imagine sending your hips back and then sending them back up again, all right? So we're just gonna grab onto your dumbbells, start with them in your hands, roll your shoulders back so that you've got good posture. You're not rounding it forward. In three, two, one, let's go. And bring it down. If that's as far as you can go before you start to round, that's fine, okay? And then you squeeze it back up. Bring it down, squeeze it back up. Bring it down, squeeze it back up. Now you wanna try and imagine that you are holding a little towel in between your chin and your chest. A lot of people when they do deadlifts, they like to look at themselves in the mirror, but then you're breaking that nice straight line in your back, okay? So you keep your chin tucked in, nice and tight. Let it travel down, squeeze it up. Let it travel down, squeeze it up. Good, let it travel down. Squeeze it up, let it travel down, and squeeze it up. We've got 10 more seconds on the clock. Squeeze, squeeze. You can fit in two more reps. Squeeze, and whew, last one. Oh, there we go, good. So ideally you can do this for three to four sets. It helps you build cardio, helps you build the strength. They both complement each other when it comes to that fat burning process and making sure that you've just got a nice kick to your day. That is the Monday episode for Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. We've got Wednesday and Friday coming up on Wednesday. We've got local footballer Lionel Tan coming in, as well as Asher from Limitless. We're talking a little bit about mental health complemented with the physical health. We'll see you on Wednesday on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara.